Hey, <laughs> how are you? I just woke up a little while ago, <clears throat> and um, it's uh, it's uh, early. It's at five th five thirty. I'm almost halfway through my first cup of coffee. I don't know why my camera isn't picking up the light and why it's all greeny like that. I have no idea. But anyways, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so why are you making a video, Jess? Um, that's a good question. I got a lot of stuff going on today. And, um, I feel that, uh, I, um, sometimes, look, let's just put it this way. My work is, I have a, a lot of work that I have to do. And the work that I do is with people. And... Unfortunately, or fortunately, but usually in the midst of it, it does not feel fortunate. But, um, like, I'm, I'm a catalyst, if that makes sense to you. And, um, I change people. People change after they deal with me. And, um... You know, I'm not saying, like, oh, I go to Cumberland Farms and I buy some rolling papers and now your life is different because I just bought some rolling papers through you. No, I'm not saying that. Um, but what I'm saying is, sorry, I just got a notification. Probably got brighter. But what I'm saying is that if, if we have reason to interact... and have conversation, chances are you're going to be getting information from me that is going to change your life. In some way, shape, or form. Not bad, and not good. I just actually had somebody on my porch yesterday uh, confirming that fact. And, uh, and she said that, um, I was a, uh, I was a motivator, and it inspired her to embrace her creativity during this really difficult time that she's going through in her life. I don't know what is up with the picture, but anyway, and, um, you know, certain certain things that I've said to this woman and certain things that I've given to this woman and certain things that I've done have um, impacted her in a very profound way. Unfortunately, what ends up happening with these people who are impacted by me in a very profound way is that these people become very fucking judgmental of me, right? So, um, my kindness and patience is, um, on a different level. My tolerance is on a different level, but, um, people like to judge me. <laughs> like, they really love to fucking judge me, you know? As soon as I start to, like, enforce my own boundaries, because obviously... I can't be going through, excuse me, my life and my work as a, and doing the things that I do without having some sort of boundaries. I've had different periods in my life where the boundaries were so non-existent that, um, I've had to, um, you know, forcefully create, <laughs> forcefully create those boundaries. And, um, <clears throat> they exist, even though they look like, 
you know, a fence made out of fucking marshmallows. They do exist. And trust me. Trust me. When I decide that I don't... That I need something more than marshmallows for the boundary. That it, it transforms into something that will protect me. So... Um... Yeah. It's not easy. It's really not easy. Because people will come at me and judge me for all kinds of shit. All kinds of shit. I had another situation where I was sitting out on my porch having a beer and somebody decides they want to come up and visit with me. Okay. Alright. Sure. Come on up. You know why? Because... Oftentimes people need me. Oftentimes people fucking need me. That's the hard part. It's like when people are in a state where they need some kind of support and love, some word of wisdom, something. This, it comes from me, but it's not. It's not of this. It's filtered through this experience. All these many spiritual experiments that I have done throughout my entire life. And um, for whatever reason, certain people, when they do get help from you, they can't help but turn around and judge you. So then when it's time to leave and to not... You know, it's time, like, good night, have a good night, yes, thank you. Like, don't keep coming back. <laughs> don't keep coming back. If I say, like, okay, it was very nice visiting with you, um, have a good night. If you want to come back, you really need to make sure that it's okay with me for you to come back. And if I say it's not, it's not because I was drinking a fucking beer. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, it is uh, July 21st, 2020, and um, yesterday afternoon was the, uh, was the new moon in Cancer, the second new moon in Cancer, which falls in my seventh house, and um, I did quite a lot of introspection and... Um, planted really important seeds for what I actually want. My last two moon cycles, the last two new moons and the last two full moons, um, have been very much seventh house oriented as far as my activities during them. Um, but um, in, in this like weird way, and maybe it's the moon trying Neptune, maybe it's the moon trying um, which is, you know, kind of trying my Jupiter, my Jupiter is in Pisces, my Mars is in Cancer, um, in the seventh house, and Pisces is, I have, uh, I have Aquarius in the second house, but also all of Pisces, and, um, so my Jupiter is in the second house, and I just feel like, in order for me, relationship, relationships are very important to me, as far as, like, my own self-value goes because of what I bring to the table but oftentimes um, what I bring to the table is just so I have Aquarius in the second house <laughs> what matters to me is probably not what matters to you. But I'm very passionate about my relationships. And, um... I feel like if, when things aren't working, 
between two people or a person and a group of people or whatever that communication is really important but it's also important to like just take a breath or two or five or nine and um, chill you know not do things out of our emotional nature that are not good for us and um, I don't want to hurt anybody so and I feel like the way that I hurt people Look, I'm gonna, I'm, I have, I have like a level of energy, right? And I'm going to like come to you with my energy, right? And I'm gonna interact with you at my energetic level. And if our like independent energetic levels are complementary with each other, shit's gonna be good. Um, and if they're not, trust that an equilibrium is going to happen one way or another so there's really not much that I can do about it all I can do is just be patient maintain my boundaries remain honest tell the truth be straightforward and um yeah it's basically it it's basically all I can really do I can't I'm not going to force anything. I'm not going to, like, submit to threats. I'm not going to be guilt-tripped into becoming something that I am not comfortable in anymore. And um, this is part of what all of us need to do on our, our walk on this earth, is really, truly... Really, really, and truly. Really, 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 and truly. Get to know ourselves and present ourselves authentically to the world so that we may reap all the benefits of what we have to offer. And manipulation and lying and all these things, yeah, they work. They work in the short term. They get you what you want. But at the end of the day, you will pay. But it won't be me making you pay. Your spirit will have recognized something in me. And my spirit will reflect back to you. What you have done and the choices that you have made as regards me. the way the cookie crumbles clearly I'm not over here rejoicing in anybody's downfall I never want for any of you to fuck me over <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's true, though. I don't, because people fucking suffer. People suffer. People suffer. Come to me with some bullshit. That's why half of you are afraid to come to me. I already know. I'm fucking terrifying. <laughs> I already told you I am. I try to tell you I am. terrifying Alright, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later.